Today we start week three of our daily Advent devotionals. And this week we're focusing on what happens when Jesus makes his home amongst us. Our reading today comes at the end of Luke 4. But I just want to recap a little bit where we're at as we start today. At the start of Luke chapter 4, Jesus has been tempted by the devil. And I think there's, there's a central question behind all this. What sort of king will you be, Jesus? If you are coming to earth and you are making home here, what does that mean? What will your home be like? Will it be a palace of power? Will it be um, you surrounded by the trappings of, of, of luxury in the midst of a time of, of real poverty and inequality? Will you seek comfort to be well fed? Jesus, will this be, will this be fame and will this be power? He turns away from all of that and says, actually, he will live by his father's hand. He will seek his father's glory. After that, Jesus goes to Nazareth. And after this battle of scripture quotations with the devil, he stands up and he reads from the prophet Isaiah. I've come to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour, not for me, but for you. I've come to bring, bring healing and hope, to proclaim jubilee. But then there's this unsettling conclusion. Jesus will be rejected in his hometown, as all the prophets are. Jesus comes to that which was his own, and his own does not receive him, as it says in John. He heads on from there to Capernaum, heads to another synagogue, and there, finally, he is proclaimed the Holy One of God. You are the one who is to come. But the one giving him this title is a demon that is being cast out of someone. Still, they're slow to accept him. Jesus has come home. Jesus has sought to make refuge among us that he might lead us to safety. And yet there's this uneasy relationship. People are fearful. People marvel at the way that he teaches with real power, at the way that he heals and, and casts out demons and does incredible things. And yet he's pushing across all the ways that other people would try to find power and comfort and home. So then we come to our story. After Jesus saying that he will bring sight and liberty and equity. He comes to Simon's house and he heals his mother-in-law, rebukes the sickness. I think that's a fantastic word, a word maybe we don't use too often, rebuke, but it brings with it this sense that that sickness, disease, they are not part of what God wants for us. They are not going to be with us ultimately. Jesus is going to wage war with them and he comes and he attacks this sickness. He rebukes it. He speaks it away. Be gone. And then people bring to him as sunset comes and people are free to travel on the Sabbath. People bring to him the sick. People bring to him the demon possessed. And Jesus, he brings healing. He brings freedom. That is what Jesus coming home means. He's undeterred by, by the rejection, by the mixed reactions. He just comes and he brings who he is, life and wholeness and goodness. But Jesus, now that he's found a captive audience, he doesn't sit there. He doesn't set up a church there. He doesn't set up a, the new synagogue where people come to his teaching and come listen to him and he would heal and, and gather and, and make a name for himself. Jesus says, no, I've got to go. I've got to travel that I could proclaim the good news. I could proclaim the kingdom that I could show that God has come home. 
And God coming home is not just about gathering to one place, but it's about God's goodness and God's presence going out into all the forgotten spaces. So the question, as we read today, as we pray, as we centre our hearts on the scripture, I think it comes in two parts. The first is, what do you need? What do you need? Do you feel afflicted, burdened by, by brokenness? Do you need healing? Do you need hope? A situation that just seems beyond redemption. We might have the audacity of hope today. We might have the, the goal to pray and believe that God can turn any situation around. Or do you need a bit of that, a bit of that freedom? When Jesus proclaims the year of favour, when he proclaims jubilee and restoration, is that what you need? Are you in a place where you feel marked by your unequal position? Trust God. And I don't say those words glubly, because when we're in the midst of, of uh, financial difficulty and physical sickness, long-term illness, it can feel a bit dispiriting reading these stories and thinking, Jesus, why haven't you done that for me? But we shouldn't let our dispiritedness shape our picture of a God who, when he comes, gets alongside us in and with our situation. He is present. This is the point. Jesus isn't far off deciding which prayers to answer. He comes in the midst of the situation. He is there with the people. And the second question, very simply, is if Jesus did came, did come, sorry, would you accept him? In fact, are there areas of your life where Jesus has arrived and you haven't recognised him? Where is God already at work? What miracles are already happening in your life that you should be grateful for? Where can you see the hand of God at work? All of us should be grateful for making it through this challenging time. So maybe your prayer today could be what you need and what you've noticed.